<clears throat> Good morning, everyone. So we have 31 people here. What time is it? It's 10.07. I want you guys to sign in your attendance on Putra Blast first. We will start with Hikmah if she is here. Hikmah and then after Hikmah, it will be. Um, yeah, I hope I'm not muted. Okay, I'm not muted. After Hikmah, it's apa? It's hydrogen atomic spectrum, which is chapter twenty three still. Mariam Aisha Redo Azmina, and also okay, Louis is on X rays and lasers. Okay, and then so Hikma, Aish, Mariam Aisha, Reto, Azmina, and then Louis Haja, Virus Ayumi, then Habis, chapter 23. And then chapter 24, the first part of it will be the ones with week 17 and 18, which is on nuclear composition. Nuclear binding and decay curve. Okay. So that's Ideal Amirul Sophia. I hope you guys are ready. And then I do Aliana Umaira, Zafira, and also Najwa. And the rest of you with week 18, that's on Tuesday next week. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's start with Hikmah. If Hikmah is ready, is Hikmah ready? Doctor, can you allow me to share screen? Oh, sorry, forgot. Okay, I've allowed. Can you see the slide, Doctor? Boleh, boleh. Please proceed. Okay. All the best. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good morning I bid to Dr. Nadia Husseini binti Zainul Abidin and to all my fellow classmates. I, Nurul Hikmah Binti Jaslim, AS11514, and today we'll be presenting a mini topic from Chapter 23, Atomic Physics, which is the early model of an atom. So for today's presentation, I'm going to talk about tada, the atomic structure proposed by Ernest Rutherford in 1911. So what did Mr. Ernest Rutherford do? Well, in order for him to study the structure of an atom in a more accurate manner compared to what had been proposed by J.J. Thompson, he performed the gold foil experiment. This experiment consists of a source of alpha particles located in a lead container with a very small slit so that the alpha particles only came out from the small opening and traveled, traveled in a straight line. Next, we have this thin gold foil over here surrounded by a fluorescent screen. So how does this experiment work? These alpha particles will be emitted from the container and it will pass through the atoms of gold foil and directly hit the fluorescent screen. Previously, we talked about J.J. Thompson that proposed that an atom is like a pudding of positively charged particles with electrons embedded in it, just like this one. Therefore, supposedly the alpha particles will pass right through the atoms and hit the detector straight. However, Ernest Rutherford observed that most alpha particles pass through pass through the atoms with very little deflection, while some of them deflected at large angles and few of them bounced back. These results have proven that the atomic structure proposed by J.J. Thompson was incorrect. What makes it happen though? Any thoughts on the results? Well, it would only be possible if the atom was mostly empty space with a positive charge concentrated in the center, aka the nucleus. Here I provide you guys with a picture to, to have better understanding. These results also lead to conclusions made by Ernest Rutherford, which is the first one, 
most of the space inside an atom is empty. And the, the second one, the positive charge occupies a small space inside the atom. And here are the hypotheses made by Ernest Rutherford. The first one, there is a positively charged center of an atom called the nucleus. Nearly all the mass of an atom resides in the nucleus, so he predicted the presence of the nucleus. Secondly, the electrons revolve around the nucleus in a circular path, just like how our planet revolves around the sun. Thirdly, size of nucleus is very small compared to the size of the atom. Uh-oh, it's saddening to hear that Rutherford's model failed to explain the stability of electrons in circular path. Why? Because the electrons are supposed to undergo the centripetal acceleration, right? Since it revolves around the nucleus. The electrons are ought to radiate electromagnetic waves, which is the same frequency, which results in losing energy. And these electrons will eventually collide with the nucleus. Therefore, the atom would become highly unstable. This would happen, would have to happen if the model were to be accepted. But the atomic model proposed by Rutherford needs further modification, which was then done by Niels Bohr. So I guess that's all from me. Thank you very much for your time. Woohoo, thanks. That was good. Okay, moving on. Uh, who is the next one? Let's go for hydrogen atomic spectrum. Punya people, which is Mariam Aisha Redo and Asmina. Which one of you guys not go first? Have you guys discussed about this? Tak kisah siapa siapa dulu. Okay, siapa? This is Louis. <laughs> um, can Mariam go first? Mariam Aisha? Uh, can you? Okay. Can you see my screen right there? Okay, so Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good morning to Dr. Nan and all of you. So today I will present the second subtopic of chapter 23 which is hydrogen atomic spectrum. So first we look at atomic spectrum. Okay, atomic spectrum is when the electron drops from a higher energy orbit to a smaller energy orbit then the photon is emitted. This is what we call atomic spectrum. Then we go to the emission spectra. The emission spectra, if we energize the hydrogen gas with an electric current, then the hydrogen molecule is split into a hydrogen atom. And it will energize the hydrogen atom to emit or produce a specific color spectrum of four colors. And we as a human, we are not able to see the four individual colors because our brain only integrates those four colors into one single or one specific colors which is the colors that we only can see. But when we diffract or split the, the hydrogen pinkish colors, then we can see the colors that actually been emitted by the hydrogen atom, which is we, we have violet, blue, turquoise, and red. And this is what we call emission spectrum of hydrogen. It means that shows all the specific colors emitted by energized substance. And we use the prism here to separate these colors into a single line color. And when we do so, we can determine the wavelength uh, of each color produced by the hydrogen. So I think that's all from me. Thank you. Thank you, Mariam Aisha. Very nice pictures. Okay, next one is uh, Redo. Okay, Dr. Reda. Um, Boleh tapi awak macam lag sekejap. Cuba cakap lagi sekali. Okay. So. Uh, okay macam dah okay dah. Hello. hello. 
Macam dah okay. Okay start. Okay so today I will present two parts which is uh, the line spectra of hydrogen atoms and fine structures of hydrogen atoms. So for the line spectra of hydrogen atoms here we have a spectral series uh, which is a Lyman series, Bangu series, Pachin series, Blackett series and Pipan series. So yang penting dekat sini, um, tiga which is Lyman series, Bangu series and Pachin series and one orbits. And we can find Lyman series in the ultraviolet uh, spectrum for the Bangu series and we can find Bangu series in a visible spectrum and for the question series we um dia bergerak daripada high orbits to the empty orbits and we can find question series in the, bila dia bergerak daripada high levels to the lower levels orbit it will it will emit a electron in the form of photon so so for the basic um this is the basic formula and since dia bergerak daripada high levels to the low, to the lower in we need to find the difference so by using f equal to c over lambda the important formula is this two and this is important formula in this topic since it will it derive from e go to the second part which is uh, fine structure of hydrogen atoms. So for the fine structure of hydrogen atoms, it is from it is in form of EXP orbit. So sebelum ni, kita jumpa di dalam bentuk circular orbit, right? So for the fine structure, the EXP orbit and it is a Boson Muffet model principal quantum numbers and orbital quantum and this is the, the formula for the fine structure of hydrogen atoms. So this is a Boston effect model and I think that's all from me. Thank you. Okay, Reto, thanks. Uh, so, so tadi Reto cakap pasal Balmer and Pashen. Saya tak tahu nak sebut macam mana. Um, so tadi Dato cakap pasien tu move from high orbit to low orbit. Uh, Balmer macam mana tadi? Um, Balmer high orbit to low, low to low orbit tapi dia sampai N2. So for the pasien dia sampai N3. Ah okay okay. Alright so I hope everyone heard that. Okay so moving on. Thanks Dato that was good. Uh, moving on after this is Azmina Mardia. Nampak ke? Nampak. Hmm? Unless awak memang share screen hitam hmm. lah. Okay, nampak dah. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh to Dr. Nat and everyone. So today I will present on atomic spectrum. Okay. Okay, first, uh, atomic spectra. Atomic emission spectra in the visible region. Uh, so, atoms emit certain discrete characteristic frequencies of electromagnetic radiation. Uh, and each atom has its own unique characteristic of spectrum. Um, okay, for example, an atom of sodium has different energy levels and transition than an atom of lithium. The different mix of energy differences for each atom will produce different colors, uh, as you can see uh, in the picture. Um, each metal also will give a characteristic flame of emission spectrum. <laughs> Next, uh, I will go to atomic transition uh, energy level. An atom also may have uh, many possible energy levels. So this is the ground state and 
at excited state at ordinary temperatures, most of the atoms in a sample are in the ground state. Only photons with energies corresponding to differences between energy levels can be absorbed or emitted. Uh, um, next, I will show the example. Uh, first, uh, dia bagi tahu from the ground state to the um, higher state. So, maksudnya dia adalah absorption. Lepas tu, uh, substitute into the formula. Uh, okay, lepas tu, jawapan dia negatif. Sebab dia adalah absorption. Absorption adalah from uh, low level to the higher level. Okay, lepas tu, kalau contoh yang kedua ni, dia pun cakap um, N. 3 to n equal to 2, which means from higher level to lower level. So, jawapan dia akan positive sebab means that dia emitted. Uh, and the last one, uh, yang ni just substitute je. Uh, that's all from me. Thank you. Okay, uh, Azmina nak tanya RH tu apa? Um, RH is right but constant. Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you for the examples. That was good. Uh, next one is. Siapa? Hmm. Eh, saya tulis dekat dalam Excel sheet. Danish Da, Mariam Aisha Da, Rebo Da, Asmina Da. Is it between kejap lepas ni X ke? Atomic spectra. Jangan, jangan. Cepat dengan aku siapa next? Hmm, atomic spectra tak ada pada dalam ni. Stray code. Siapa tu? Virus eh? Virus, virus. Tak lah. Saya dia. Okay. X-ray dengan laser yang after this. Okay. So orang X-ray dengan laser get ready eh. Okay, go for it. Virus. All the best. Boleh nampak tak? Hmm, belum. Okay. okay, nampak dah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good morning to the internet and my fellow friends. Today I will be presenting about the production of X-ray. Okay. X-ray can be produced by an X-ray tube which is a vacuum tube that uses a high uh, voltage uh, to accelerate yeah. the Baru uh, screen awak start. Ah, okay. Dia baru gerak. Sekejap eh. Okay. So, saya punya internet slow. Okay. Tak apa. Tak apa. Internet kita semua tengah teruk. <laughs> okay. Sekejap eh. Dia still dekat uh, starting page awak. Awak dah masuk dekat dalam yang tube tu kan? Ah, okay. Baru dia gerak. Hmm. Alright. Please continue. Okay. X-ray can be produced by an X-ray tube which is a vacuum tube that uses a high voltage to accelerate the electron emitted by a hot cathode to a high velocity. The X-ray are generated when high velocity electron collide with a metal target which is the anode. Okay, this part is, this part we explain about the detail of production of X-ray. Okay, the first one, electrons are released from a heated filament and accelerated through a large voltage. Then when the electrons strike the metal target, the ground state electrons are not out of the orbit. The higher orbital electrons then jump to occupy the vacuum spaces. And lastly, X-ray are emitted from the metal target. In addition, uh, in medical sunstand or molybdenum metal target is usually used in more specialized applications such as when software X-ray as in mammography. So the uh, application part will be present by you. Uh, that's all from me. Thank you. Thanks, Fairuz. Nak tanya? Uh, bukan sebab awak tak prepare, saya, tak memang, saya memang nak tanya. Um, so, kalau photoelectric effect dengan X-ray, apa perbezaan dia? Electric. 
sebab tadi kita nampak ada elektron dia uh, emitted right kan kan electron strike the when electron strike the metal target the ground state electrons are knocked out of the orbit uh, okay how is this different from photoelectric effect kalau awak ingat lagi lah kau tak ingat tak apalah just general question eh bukan nak attack awak tau <laughs> Eh, tak ingat. Tak ingat. <laughs> eh, okay, okay, tak apa. So, photoelectric photo effect kita shine light, right? Kita shine light when they lepas stress hole of a certain energy of that metal, baru the electrons can be emitted and the electrons are called photoelectrons. So, extra ni lain daripada photoelectric effect. So, please bear that in mind. It's different. Itu je lah saya nak bagi aware. Okay, that's all. Thank you, Fairos. That was good. Can we have Louis now? Or whoever is next? Uh, doctor, is, is my voice clear? Yes, voice is clear. Your screen is nampak lah. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, a very good morning to doctor and everyone. So today I'm going to continue the presentation of uh, applications of x-rays. So the four applications I'm going to present today are radiotherapy, fluoroscopy, airport security check, and chest x-rays. So the first one is radiotherapy. Radiotherapy is a cancer treatment that uses high doses of radiation to kill cancer cells and shrink tumors. At low doses, radiation is used in x-rays to see inside your body as with x-rays of your teeth or broken bones. At high doses, radiation therapy kills cancer cells or slows their growth by damaging their DNA. Cancer cells whose DNA is damaged beyond repair stop dividing or die. When the damaged cells die, they are broken down and removed by the body. Radiation therapy does not kill cancer cells right away. In fact, it takes days or weeks of treatment before DNA is damaged enough for cancer cells to die. Then cancer cells keep dying for weeks or months after radiation therapy ends. So the next one is fluoroscopy. Fluoroscopy is a type of medical imaging that shows a continuous x-ray image on a monitor, much like an x-ray movie. During a fluoroscopy procedure, an x-ray beam is passed through the body. The image is transmitted to a monitor so the movement of a body part of, or of an instrument or contrast agent through the body can be seen in detail. It uses x-rays to obtain real-time moving images of the interior of an object. Fluoroscopy is used in a wide variety of examinations and procedures to diagnose or treat patients. So the next one is airport security check. In airports, luggage is scanned using X-ray scanners. Carry-on luggage passes through X-ray scanners at the security checkpoint, while checked baggage pass through X-ray in secured areas of the airport. The X-rays in these scanners are used to create pictures of what is inside the bag. So from a passenger's point of view, an X-ray scanner looks like a boxy tunnel and a conveyor belt which moves the baggage through the tunnel. Inside the box, the baggage is scanned with X-rays. Scanning is enabled by the fact that X-rays penetrate different substances to a different extent. The machine produces X-rays with a special tube which is lined with lead. In the lead lining, there's a narrow around one centimeter wide gap through which the X-rays are directed into the tunnel. The conveyor belt carries each piece of baggage through the X-ray beam, and on the opposite, opposite side of the tunnel, a detector measures the amount of radiation which has penetrated the scan item. Then substances such as lead absorb the most radiation blocking the X-ray's progression. Based on the amount of radiation which has passed the piece of baggage, a computer forms a close to real time image of the items. So the last one is chest X-ray. Chest X-ray helps to spot abnormalities or diseases of the airways, blood vessels, bones, heart and lungs. Chest X-rays can also determine if you have fluid in your lungs 
or fluid or air surrounding your lungs. The X-ray occurs in a special room with a movable X-ray camera attached to a large metal arm. Uh, so the person will stand next to a plate. This plate may contain X-ray film or a special sensor that records the images on the computer. Uh, the person will wear a lead apron to cover their genitals. The X-ray technician will also tell the person how to stand and will record both front and side views of the person's chest. While the images are taken, the person needs to hold their breath so that the chest stays completely still. If the person moves, the, the images might turn out blurry as the radiation passes through the body and onto the blade. Denser materials such as bone and the muscles of the heart will appear white. So that's all, thank you. Thanks, Louis. That was a lot of information. Thank you for that. Okay, next one is lasers. Who is doing lasers? I think it's uh, it's Hajar and Yen. You know, it's Alifa Ayuni. It's Ayuni. Ayuni and Hajar. Can you see, Doctor? Yep. All the best. Assalamualaikum and good morning to Dr. Nair and everyone. Today I will be presenting the topic lasers. So we take a look at preview of the subtopic and I will be presenting the stimulated absorption process and spontaneous emission. Just a little recap what we have learned before. So we know an atom will emit radiation only at certain frequencies that correspond to energy separation between the various allowed states. So now we need to consider an atom with many allowed energy states labeled as E1, E2, E3, and so on. So now we take a look at energy level diagram on the right side. As you can see, E1 is the lowest energy state, which is we call the ground state, and all the other states, E2, E3, and E4, we call as excited states. Now we move to the first process. Stimulation absorption process is the starting point to achieve the laser. It happens when a photon of light having energy E2 to E1 and at ordinary temperatures, most of the atoms in a sample are in the ground state. As you can see, the atom is on the E1. So the atom in the ground state E1 may absorb the photon and jump to a higher energy state, which is E2. Now, we take a look at the spontaneous emission. Spontaneous emission is the continuous process from the stimulation absorption process. As we see just now, the atom is on the higher state. The excited state is on E2. When the atom is the out in the excited state, will automatically decay to the ground state by emitting a photon of energy and it will fall down to the ground state E1. Then this process is called spontaneous emission. Generally, an atom or electron is in excited state can only stay for 10 to the power negative 9 and 10 to the power negative 8 seconds. So the next process will be continued by IUNI. That's all for me. Thank you. Thank you, Ajar. Can take gambar awak. Okay, next. Ooh. Oh, pakai Canva, menarik. Okay, I can see your screen, but... Uh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay, nampak dah. All right. Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good morning to Dr. Nan and my fellow classmates. Uh, my name is Alifa Noraini Binti Alwi and my matrix number is AS11823. So now I will be presenting on chapter 23 uh, on subtopic lasers. Uh, as Haja has presented the stimulation absorption and spontaneous emission, then I will only present the rest, which is stimulated emission, population inversion and their application. So first of all, I want you guys to imagine, uh, okay, this is a stimulated emission part. So first of all, I want you guys to imagine we had a red light. So what kind of photons would it give off? It would give off a red photons because it red light. And it will give off um, in all different direction. 
but would it not be cool if we could take all of the photons and point in the same direction coherently, exact uh, in the same direction? So we can by using a stimulated emission. So um, let's take a look at uh, this diagram. In order for atom to be excited, it has to get proper amount of energy. It does that using a corresponding photon that we're flying. Therefore, the frequency of this has to match exactly to the energy between those two energy states, which is E1 and E2. Now, as another photon comes in during the emission, we're going to create two identical photons. So next, let me show you how uh, that plays out if we have a number of different atoms. Let's say one atom uh, is stimulated, gets hit by a photon. Um, how many is it going to kick off? The answer is two. So we can see how this is just pulling on itself. Uh, one photon comes in and two photons given out. The two photons uh, can travel and perhaps this, uh, these, three, these two photons could maybe produce another four photons because each one could then uh, cause its own stimulated emission. And those four go off and then cause eight and very soon what we get is basically huge amount of photons given off because we had kind of massive increase in photons given off. This is actually what we wanted inside laser. We want huge amount of photons given off that we can then direct and kind of use them for users. But actually that doesn't, ha doesn't happen very easily. And what we have got to think about is um, something called um, population inversion to make this flavorable. So what is population inversion? <laughs> okay, now let's move on to this diagram. Okay, if I say that there are N1, which is number of atoms in the lower energy level, and N2, number of atoms in the excited energy level, then at equilibrium, N1 uh, will always be greater than N2 because all of the atoms will try to attain the minimum possible energy. So most of the atoms will be in the lower energy level. But um, the light amplification can progress only if there are sufficient energy uh, sufficient, sorry, sufficient number of atoms available in the excited energy states, uh, which is E2. So if there are a number of atoms, if there are uh, no atoms available in excited state, then the light amplification uh, will stop. So for getting considerable amount of light amplification and emission to be effective for light amplification, it should occur at large scale. And it will occur at large scale only if there are large number of atoms available in the excited state. So this condition is achieved by maintaining some number of atoms in the excited state as compared to the number um, of atoms in lower energy state. So N2 uh, greater than N1. This condition is called as population inversion condition. Why? Because at equilibrium, there were more number of atoms in the low energy level, but in order to get stimulated emission at large scale, in, in order to get a stimulated light amplification, it should, uh, we have to invert, uh, we have to invert this. So um, from N1 greater than N2 to get population inversion, uh, N2 must be greater than N1. So it is called population inversion. So next we move on to the application of laser. So laser application um, is used in uh, various fields such as uh, laser technology. And for example, in medical use, laser operations um, are sterile, like less surgery, which even take uh, less recovery time. Then uh, secondly, GPS mapping which used in various fields like uh, urban planning, cartography and advertising and marketing. Uh, next is industrial use, um, such as drill holes and sharp and shape hard materials. And next is velocity measurement. And second, uh, and lastly is laser eye surgery, which is to reshape the surface of eye and improve and correct uh, short-sightedness and long-sightedness. So I think that's all from me. Thank you. Wow, that was good. I was very impressed.
not uh, my student punya master pun tak tentu lagi boleh cerita pasal population inversion. It's a hard concept to grasp. So that was good, really really good. Um I wanted to talk a little bit about the applications in laser technology. So laser eye surgery ni sebenarnya is the LASIK. Kalau korang kalau korang familiar lah with the term LASIK yang kalau orang rabun dia buat laser kat mata uh, terus tak payah pakai spec. So that's called LASIK. I think it's L A S I X. And dulu mahal gila waktu it first came out it was like 20k or something like that. Now it's like uh, 4 to 6k pun dah boleh dapat dah and it's very reliable lah tapi um, some people tak nak risk like doing both eyes I, I just want to talk about it because I find it interesting uh, some people don't want to do both eyes terus don't tak nak pakai laser kat mata terus for both eyes sebab takut like if anything happens at least one eye is untouched faham tak So if anything happens, satu, satu mata je lah yang kena laser macam tu lah. But um, the reality is it's very uh, it's a very safe procedure. It's done by a specialist. Uh, basically dia akan, uh, tahu kan mata kita sebenarnya a smooth surface if kita tak rabun. Bila kita rabun, dia punya cornea tu, uh, it's not very licin. So when it's not very licin, I don't remember what's the exact term. I don't think it's cornea, it's retina. I don't know, this is bio thing. So it's not smooth. When it's not smooth, when light goes through our eyes, dia punya pantulan tu tak cantik. So when tak cantik, uh, dia punya image tu pun tak cantik lah kan. It's like mirror concept jugalah. Ataupun a refraction concept. It's all physics, but this time it's with a little bit of bio. So when it's not cantik, the image is not cantik, that's when you get rabun. And what they do is they correct that the roughness of the surface to make it leaching so that when the light penetrates, it's all good. The image form is cantik lah. So that's about LASIK. six. And then <clears throat> uh, another application of lasers um, is If I don't know if you guys know, but Nilofa, cik nak cakap pasal Nilofa kan. Nilofa dia buat, um, dia pergi ni kan, dia pergi medical punya spa. Okay, so what that medical spa does is, they use laser on her skin to resurface, untuk bagi cantik lah, resurface ni maksudnya dia akan buang kulit mati. Um, but, kalau kita fikirkan, in general laser ni is high intensity light, right? But now that kita punya teknologi dah evolve, we can actually control the light so that it can be as low as we want or as high as we want. So the laser that is used in the medical spa ni sebenarnya yang very low intensity which means that they can they will only re remove a little bit of your skin sahaja. So that's very interesting to me. They can control the amount of skin that goes off from your face tu pun dah very impressive lah. That's not my... PhD by the way. I'm doing lasers but not on that lah. And then um, that's in the medical part. Uh, but you need physics to do that, right? Even though it's medical. And then, uh, so that's called biomedical engineering or biophysics. Uh, benda tu wujud lah. <laughs> Kalau korang tak tahu. Uh, but I don't think Malaysia has it. But US banyak benda this topic. And then what else? Um, the military uses lasers to shoot enemies. Uh, remember I told you that lasers can't go to the sky? They can. Uh, as I told you before, lasers can be controlled, the intensity, the penetration depth, semua tu boleh control. So sebenarnya boleh je nak tembak. So tu je lah that I want to say about lasers. Sebab saya tahu kan benda ni. So saya cerita lah. Okay, so next is... Hmm, siapa? Chapter 23 dah habis. So it's chapter 24. The first subtopic of chapter 24 is siapa-siapa baik korang aku. Chapter 24. Um, me doctor. Who is that? Uh, Zafira, nuclear composition. Okay. Zafira, want to go first? Uh, okay. Okay. So, lepas Zafira, Aidil and Sofia. 
okay? Hello. Hello. <laughs> You okay, doctor, can part. you see it? Boleh, tapi kecil lah. Okay. I think you should zoom in. Boleh tak zoom in? I think I need to open it with. Maybe awak boleh download and... um. Zoom in PDF. Uh -huh. Take your time. Lepas ni ID dengan Sofia, right? get ready. Okay, can you see it, Doctor? Yes. Much better. Boleh buang yang tepi tekut. Ah, okay dah. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Nur Zafira Najwa uh, and my matrix number is AS12216. And good morning to Dr. Nat and my fellow friends. So today I'm going to present about the first subtopic of chapter 24 which is nuclear compositions. So uh, the first uh, point that I want to touch is the atomic nucleus. So as we can see in this picture, the atomic nucleus consists of positively, positively charged protons and neutral neutrons. And as we all know, the collective term for protons and neutrons is known as nucleon. And then for the second point is the nuclear mass, which is the atomic mass unit, is expressed in the unit U, which is the uh, which is one point six six zero. 559 uh, times 10 to the power of 27 kilogram. And this is based on the definition that the mass of one atom of carbon-12 is exactly 12 U. And then in this diagram, uh, as we can see, uh, protons, uh, which is a stable subatomic particle, have a positive charge equal in magnitude to a unit of electron charge, which has a negative charge. Uh, so, and the, as you can see, the mass of proton is 1.672622 2 times 10 to the power of negative 27 kilogram, which is 1,836 times the mass of an electron. So, proton is much heavier than electron. And then we move to the next point, which is isotope. So, the nuclei of all atoms for a particular element must contain must contain the same number of protons but different number of neutrons. So isotopes, uh, we can probably say that it has a same number of protons but different number of neutrons. For example, we have carbon-6 isotopes. So uh, here in the, left, uh, in the left side, we can see the nuclear notation. So X, uh, X is for chemical symbol for an element. And A is for the mass number or number of nucleon in a nucleus. And Z is the number of proton in a nucleus. So uh, this is the example of isotope. For the first one is hydrogen 1, which have one proton and one uh, nucleon. So next we have hydrogen 2, which have one proton and two nucleon. So if we want to find uh, neutrons in it, we can simplify, uh, we can simply just minus the nu nucleons number with the proton and we can get one neutrons number. And then we have hydrogen 3 which, have, uh, which has one proton and three nucleons. And so um, back, to the, back to the definition of isotope, we can see that uh, all of these have, has the same number of proton but with a different number of neutrons. So I think that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you, Zafira. That was good. Can we go with Adil now? Is Adil here? Eh, Adil, but Adil. Adil ada tak? Tak nampak nama dia. 
Is ideal not here? Dun, dun, dun. Kita ada 36 orang. Maksudnya we are missing two people. Which is... Uh, who is NHN? Siapa nama dia NHN ni? Nurhan. Oh Nurhan. Okay. Nama-nama awak macam tu. Okay tak apa. Um, so kita go with Sofia lah. Ideal is not here I think. Sekejap saya search nama dia. Yeah. Apa dia Sofia? Ah itu tak oh. So Sofia dulu eh. Boleh dengar kan? Okay? Boleh but I can't see your screen. You're not sharing yet is it? No, I'm not sharing you. All right. Okay. Okay. So I will now be presenting this for nuclear composition. Okay. So what is nuclear composition? Nuclear co composition is an atomic nucleus. <laughs> atomic nucleus consists of positively charged proton and neutron neutron, and the collective term for proton proton and neutron is called nuclear. And you can see here that in the picture, this is where the proton and neutron are located. So proton is a positively charged point. Positively charged and neutron is a neutral neutron. So here are the properties of select particle. As you can see that the multiple every charges has a mass and electric charge except for neutron and hydrogen electron it does not have electric charge. So the electric charge for electron is negative 1.60 times 10 power of negative 19. And the proton is 1.60 times 10 power of negative 19. The difference is here, you can see the electron has a negative charge while proton has a positive charge. And, and the number of kilogram you can see. So the atomic mass was you can convert it in kilogram if one point six zero five five nine times ten power of negative thirty seven kg. So here's the nuclear symbol. symbol. Uh, so the chemical symbol for the element is here. For example, carbon six six. So, uh, for, so for example, this is carbon. It's a element. Uh, the mass, the mass number of proton and neutron is included here. Uh, the atomic number is the number of proton. If you would like to know the number of neutron, you can just minus a and z. So what is isotope? Isotope is the nuclei of all atoms for a particular element, and it must con the no sorry the nuclear of all atoms for a particular element must contain the same number of protons, but they may contain varying number of neutrons. Meaning that when they must, meaning that the nuclear number is different for each isotope. So they may contain the same number of protons, but it's different number of neutrons. For example, carbon six isotope, carbon twelve isotope, and carbon thirteen isotope. So here's how you, you calculate the number of neutrons. As I said earlier, it's atomic mass minus atomic number. So the number of neutrons is, in this case, you can see here, is 12 minus 6 is 6. So, and you can, so if you, you can see the difference in each carbon. And that's all from for my part. Thank you for listening to me. Thanks, Sophia. What does it mean by the percentage that you showed just now? I'm not sure. Why not be I'm not sure. I can just find what that means. Until you get back to me on this, what, what it means, okay? I'll try. Okay. Try your best. I'll try. Uh, so that's what I do. Uh, next one is, okay, thanks Sophia. 
Um, mm, mm, who is it? Uh, nuclear composition. It's actually the percentage of abundance. Percentage of? Abundance. Abundance of what? The, the abundance of the isotope. Ah, okay. All right. That's good to know. So anything that's on your presentation is fair game for me to ask. Eh? So please, <laughs> if you're going to put it, please make sure you know what it is. Okay, nuclear composition dah. Ideal je belum. Mana si ideal ni? Uh, nuclear composition, Sophia. Lepas nuclear composition siapa? I think it's radioactive, is it? Nuclear binding energy. Nuclear binding energy. <clears throat> so who is doing that? Uh, me. Siapa tu? Umar? Ke Pakri? Uh, Amir Haziq. Oh Haziq. Haziq. Saya selalu confuse nama Haziq, korang. Haziq Haziq. Eh Haziq tak. Saya selalu confuse suara korang. Okay so Haziq want to go first? Ah uh, Yes. Alright. All the best. Can you see my slide, Doctor? Yes, <laughs> comelnya. Okay, go for it. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good day. I'm Amir Razi Bezikifli and today I'll be presenting about nuclear binding energy. Okay, okay to start off, as Zafira and Sofa, uh, Sophia mentioned earlier, nucleus consists of protons and neut neutrons and this nuclear particle, they are bonded by strong attractive nuclear force. And the total mass of nucleus is lesser than the sum of protons and neutron masses. As you can see in the diagram, the mass of nucleus is 4.0026U and the mass of protons and neutrons is 4.0330. In a simple word, let's say the mass of proton is 1 kg and the mass of neutron is 1 kg also. And when we combine them, supposedly we get 2 kg. However, when we measure the mass of nucleus, we got 1.9 kg. So that's missing uh, about 0 0.1 kg. Uh, this one uh, I explained in a similar, uh, um, how to say, in simpler concept. So what happened to the extra, uh, the, what happened to the sum of the mass? The mass, they become energy and radiated to the surrounding. And that's the difference of mass between the nucleus and the constituent, which is proton and neutron, we call this as mass defect. So here is the formula, delta M equals to Z M subscript P plus N M subscript N minus M subscript A. So M P is the mass of proton, which is here. M A is the mass of a nucleus. M N, mass of neutron. Z is the number of protons and N is the number of neutrons. So moving on to splitting of nucleus. Just now we learned about formation of nucleus from protons and nucleus, pro proton and neutron to nucleus. And now splitting of nucleus means the nucleus split into protons and neutrons. So it's a reversible action process. So splitting of nucleus requires same amount of energy as formation of nucleus. Energy needed to split the nucleus is known as binding energy, E subscript B. So this is the formula. E subscript B equal to delta M, which is the mass defect times C square, which is speed of light. And the unit is joule or mega electron volt. So now we'll move on to the example. So the question wants us to find the binding energy in joule and mega electron volt. So first we need to find the mass defect, which is ZMP plus NMN minus M. And luckily in the diagram, they already give us the total of ZMP and and MN. So we just adding the value and we will got the mass defect is 0.034U, 34U. And then we start to find the binding energy using the formula EB equal to delta M over uh, delta MC square. And we just adding the value that we got from here and we times with the speed of flight, we will get 4.4 times exponent negative 12 joule. So we got first in joule and then we need to find it in MEV so we times it with 6.24 exponent 18 
uh, which is here, they are given the constant. Or in alternative method, we will use EB equal to 0 0.034 U. And the U is, as you can see, one U is equal to C931.5. Uh, and when we just multiply it, we got 228.3. So it's the same value. And next, we it's about nuclear stability. So binding energy per nucleon is used to determine the stability rate of the nucleus. And we, we can use the formula average binding energy equal to binding energy over atomic number. And we will get the stability rate. So when the binding energy become higher, the nuclear stability become more stable. I, that's, that's all from me. Thank you. And let's move on to the exercise which we present by Aliana and Najwa. Ooh, okay, thank you. Aliana and Najwa, siapa nak go first? Me, Doctor. Aliana. All right. Doctor, can you see my slide? Yes. Okay. All the best. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And a very good day, Adik, to Dr. Nan and my fellow friends. So me, I am your Aliana Umara, Bukit Muhammad Faisal, with matrix number AS12031. We'll be talk about the nuclear binding energy, the subtopic in chapter 24, which is the nuclear physics. So I'm going to... I'm going to talk about the basic terms of binding energy and uh, some of the exercise regarding this topic. So what is the energy, the nuclear binding energy? So it is the energy that required to split a nucleus of an atom into its component parts, which is the protons and neutrons, or in collectively the neutrons. So binding energy of nuclei is always a positive number since all nuclei require net energy to separate them into individual protons and neutrons. So binding energy is given as the equation, which is the E equals to delta mc squared, which is the E must be in joules because it is the energy. Delta m is the mass defect in kilogram, and c squared is the speed of light, which is the constant value 3 times 10 to the power of 8 meters per, meter per second. Okay. Or the binding energy also can be used in the equation of E equals to delta M times its atomic mass, which is 1U is equals to 931.5 MV over C squared. So the mass defect, the mass defect equation is given as delta M equals to Z MP plus with M M M minus with m, which is the z is the number of proton, n is the number of neutron, mp is the mass of proton, mn is the mass of neutron, and m is the actual mass of the atom. It is given on the question. So we need to remember that how we want to know about the number of neutron, we need to know that the neutrons is the total number of protons and neutrons. So when we want to know the number of neutrons, we need to minus the neutrons number with the proton so that we can get the neutrons number. We move on to the exercise. So first one, we need to calculate the nuclear ready E. So the nuclear ready E equation is given by R is equals to R0 A to the power of 1 over 3. So R0 is the constant number, which is 1.25 times 10 to the power negative 50 meter. So the question is, this is the element. So we know that the, the, the number above the element is the total number of protons and neutron, neutrons, which is the neutrons number. So we just plug in the value and we can get the answer. So the next question is to calculate the binding energy. 
So we need to know the mass of the element, which is the barium. It is given, and the mass of proton also, the mass of proton and neutron also is a constant. So first we need to find the defect, the mass defect. So we know that the num the number of protons is twenty six from the diagram. So and then we need to plug in the number of mass number of proton plus with the number of neutrons. How did I get this number? We need to subtract the number of neutrons with the proton so that we can get the number of neutrons, which is 30. Then we times 30 with the mass number of neutrons. And then we need to minus it with the mass number of the mass of barium and then we can get this 0.51448 u so to to get the binding energy we use this equation e equals to mc squared where the 1 u is equals to 931.5 mev over c squared or it also can interpret into c Spread is equals to 931.5 MeV over U. So that we just plug in the value that we get, then we can have the answer. So I think that is all for me. Thank you. Thank you, Aliana. That was very helpful. Next one is Najwa. Harap semua faham tadi yang kena present tadi tu. Because I, I understood. Just kidding. I know the concept. Lah. But I don't I don't remember. Can you see my slide? Yes. All the best. Thank you. Assalamualaikum and good day to Dr. Nadia and my fellow fans. My name is Siti Nolajwa and today I would like to present exercise about nuclear binding energy. Chop, chop. Data presentation. Oh. Um... Doktor tak nampak screen ke? Atau Dia tak masuk presentation mode ke? Memang awak tak tekan? Um, Sudah so tekan? Tak keluar ni eh tajuk nuclear binding energy ni? Uh, saya nampak nuclear binding energy cuma bukan slide show. Oh okay okay. Saya faham. <laughs> oh memang <laughs> tak tekan tu. <laughs> Okay, uh, Assalamualaikum and good day to Dr. Nadia and my fellow fans. My name is Siti Nolajwa and today I would like to present exercise about nuclear binding energy. So, for, uh, so for, uh, first of all, uh, Aliana already mentioned about formula which is E equal to delta mc squared, mc power of 2 that given by Albert Einstein. There's uh, another um, equation that you need to know, which is average binding energy, uh, which is binding energy B divided by atomic number of number, which is A. You guys already know what is when you e equal to 931.5 MeV, which is mega electron volts. This is um, you use this, this unit can be used in energy binding energy. So I think um, let's try this example. First of all, they ask for calculate the binding energy per nuclear for following elements. What you need to do is first you must uh, write this equation. Uh, it looks like equation, but it is very helpful when you wanted when you want to calculate the defect mass, which is uh, delta m. So this is uh, the hydrogen will form hydrogen and nucleon. Make sure that these sides and this side has the same value. What I mean is uh, when this, uh, what? this is photon, so uh, this side also has one photon. One plus zero is one, so this, is, this side has two uh, nucleon, uh, nucleon number, so this side also has two. One plus one is two. So let's... Um, so we can, after that, we can calculate the mass defect, which is this equation. So um, mass of hydrogen is 1.007 x 25 U plus 1.00 x 
9665U minus of uh, actual mass of hydrogen. Uh, basically, they will give you uh, actual mass of certain atom. And then you will get the de defect mass. After that, you can use the equation E equal to delta mc power of 2. Um, as you can see, uh, this and this are actually the same, but um, this is direct because uh, when you see, when you use MC's power of two, you need to. What? What? Apa yang berlaku? Apa yang berlaku? Um, something itu. Apa dia? Tak tadi saya dengar suara orang. Ah, uh -uh, saya pun dengar, tapi tak tahu siapa. Okay, tak apa. Nanti aku continue. Okay, sorry. Uh, we use delta mc power of two, but if we if we wanted to use um the speed of light, which is three times uh ten power of eight, you need you must uh to multiply with one point six six times ten negative power negative twenty seven. But um I think um. If you want to easy and fast answer, you can just use this, use this equ um, formula equation. Next, let's try this um, example. I'm sorry, this uh, the missing one. <laughs> so uh, they wanted to calculate the mass of helium. They already the actual mass. Likewise, we need to make sure that we write this equation because it is important. For, uh, for example, if you don't know how to balance the equation at both sides, just uh, look at the, the bottom. Uh, uh, this bottom has two, so we make sure that two times one get two. So you don't have to worry about nuclear uh, and hydrogen because um, when two times one is two plus two times one is two, so uh, we get four. See? Hmm. So after that, like it was, we use formula of defect mass. We will get the we um, make sure that you don't forget to to um times to multiply the might multiply the two and this because it has two hydrogen and two nuclear. After that, uh, you will get um the defect mass of uh for mention of hydrogen hydrogen. After that, you can use the binding energy equation, which is delta m delta m c. I'm sorry, this power of two is missing, but it's the same. I uh, before that they ask for energy per nuclear, so don't forget to divide by four. Like a, they um has one nuclear, so it's okay to div divide by one because it's get, give the same answer. Which uh, okay. <laughs> After next, this uh, example, the last one, you need a solve write the equation, balance the equation at the both sides, and use the equal delta m c power of two. But they wanted to uh, calculate nuclear mass. Uh, it same like um example one and two, but uh kita balik sikit cuma kita kena guna i uh, guna bind the energy formula dulu. So after that kita dah dapat um defect mass dah dapat defect mass so kita kena cari yang nuclear mass. Pam tak? Okay. No. Def. Okay. Saya As faham. Can see, okay. <laughs> After that, um, you calculate the uh, by using the equation. Make sure that don't forget to multiply three and four in this equation because it's very important. And then you will get the defect mass. Don't forget the unit, which is u. Um, so summary of this subtopic is don't forget for mass defect because it is very important to form the nucleus. And mass defect is used for binding energy because energy needed to split the nucleus. And the formula, which is E equal to delta mc power of two and average binding energy. Please don't forget the atomic number. If, um, for example, if atomic number has five, you need to divide by five. And 
for stability, if the the higher the binding energy per nucleon, the more stable is the nucleus, which is when the smaller the atom, the smaller the atom, the great the stable is nucleus. I think that is all for me. Sorry for the sorry for the okay to say. Sorry, can I put? Okay, yeah, thank you. That was time. really good. Uh, saya faham. Awak ajar bersungguh-sungguh. That was good. Good effort. Okay. Next one is... Ke dah habis untuk hari ni? Ha, belum. Aliana Umaira dah... Uh, kita dah dengan Zafira pun dah kan? Najwa pun dah. Is it fuck? Kiri, oh no, bukan, it's not Fakri. Sofia pun dah, Hazik pun dah. So ideal je lah, ideal tak ada eh. Why is ideal not here? Sekejap. Uh, sekarang kita 36 juga. So kalau ideal tak ada, which means that our class is done for today. Unless ada orang nak present from week 18 yang nak present today. Ada tak? Uma, Uma. Ah, saya dah tak jawab soalan ni lagi. <laughs> Betul. <laughs> okay, okay. Tak ada eh. Tak ada sesiapa yang nak present from week 18 today. Yeah. Okay, so we are missing ideal je lah. Yang belum from this week. So other than that, you please use the extra time to revise your chapter 23 and 24 before your final assignment. And also please complete your web assign as usual. The usual assignment. And take care, everyone. Don't forget to eat lunch. That's it for today. Take care. Thank you, Doctor. 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 Bye. Doctor. Welcome. Doctor, mm -hmm. my question. Sekejap, <laughs> <laughs> saya pun baru nak baca. Okay. Kita dah buat kat WhatsApp lah eh. Okay. Okay, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Okay, bye. Thank you, Doctor. Bye, Bakri. Get out there. Bye. Miro lah. Bye. Tutup eh. Bye korang. <laughs>